Several people have asked me about uh, my system for taking notes in Vim. Back in 2011, I uh, made a video kind of describing how I take some of my notes in Vim. And, you know, obviously it's 2014 now, some time has passed, my system's changed quite a bit. And I thought I would just kind of share some of the updates and how I take notes now. Um, but to be honest, lately I haven't been taking a lot of notes at all because right now I'm in my third year of medical school, which is a lot more clinical based and I'm mostly in the hospital or in an outpatient clinic, so there's not a whole lot of note taking that goes on. But for the first two years of medical school, it's very lecture intensive and taking notes is kind of your top priority or, or the main thing that you do. And so I, at that time, that's when I made that first video, decided to, you know, find a system that I could later uh, utilize to uh, kind of revisit some of the things I've learned. So these are the things that I wanted out of a note-taking system or that I thought were important as far as uh, choosing a note-taking system. I wanted one that used Vim. Uh, I think 2011 or 2010 is right around when I first got into Vim and started learning a lot about it and getting pretty fast at it and I wanted to continue that trend and use and use it to take notes in because I was quick at typing in Vim and not as quick at typing in other things. Um, like I just said I wanted more than anything that my notes be in some way searchable so that later on in my medical school years or in my residency or practice I could search back on my notes from the first two years and you know, revisit topics that I'd forgotten about. And uh, I also, because I wanted that capability, it, it to be in a stable format, so something that I expect would last 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, kind of this last item here, the shareable, that's kind of goes hand in hand with stable formats, because if you have stable formats then uh, that everybody uses, then you, you can easily share it with your friends. Um, I also wanted to have some organization to it or have a logical uh, way of putting things into folders so that I could say, okay, these notes belong here. Some note-taking systems just kind of throw all the notes in one big giant bowl and just jumbles them up, and I didn't really like that. I like it thanks to be organized and for me to be able to label things. And uh, I also wanted it to be readable when I do revisit it so that it's not necessarily just text on the screen. Markdown can be pretty pretty and you know it can be fairly pretty and, and easy to read but I enjoy having a little bit of styling, maybe some italics, some bold, some images, things like that. I wanted it to look nice when I when I read it so that studying would be more uh, engaging and, and more enjoyable. So my solution was basically to write all my notes in Markdown which is the format you're looking at right now. Uh, it's made to be text that looks readable and uh, that that I have you know markdown coloring obviously and I can write things in bold or in italics in here and you can kind of see how the colors change and that's nice visually when you're in Vim taking notes and it's easy to convert markdown to other formats the program that I chose to use and probably you should too is Pandoc which is kind of a universal document converter that changes lots of different file types to other file types but it especially does well the uh, markdown to PDF and so I write these notes in markdown and then read them in PDF and so I wrote a little script that basically ju does just that it it acts kind of as a wrapper for Pandoc to compile all of my notes into kind of a master PDF that I can read from and then I made some Vim mappings to you know search through the notes with and to insert you know commonly used uh, headers and commonly used image tags and tables and things like that uh, and so let's talk about some of the disadvantages to this approach uh, one is that it can only be compiled from my laptop since I'm writing you know using this script and using Pandoc which isn't easy to install on like a laptop or phone 
But that was okay with me because if I'm going to be taking notes in Vim, then I'm going to be at my computer with you know with a keyboard, or else I wouldn't be typing in Vim. Um, I mean, I can or do sometimes use Vim on my phone or tablet, but it's just to make a minor edit, not to take major notes in. So you can, you know, if you're going to be taking the notes on your laptop anyways, you might as well, when you're done, use the script to compile them. And then I just store everything, the text files and the uh, PDFs, in Dropbox so that I can access them from anywhere. You know, then if I'm at a public library, I can get on one of the computers and, you know, go to my Dropbox account online and read one of the PDFs or if I have my phone or my tablet I can you know read the PDFs from there. Uh, another disadvantage is that it's not freehand so one of the nice things about taking notes on paper is that you can draw little pictures in the margins you know you can make little graphs and draw circles around things and uh, you know that's obviously something you lose when you're writing in text but the searchable thing is something that you lose when it's not in text so searchable for me outweighed the freehand uh, thing and it's as I showed in my my first video it's not very hard to grab an image and put that image into your notes with this uh, style so you know it's not freehand but you can still grab an image or a pie chart from a PowerPoint presentation or something and sometimes that's quicker than draw, drawing it yourself so to me that advantage outweighed the disadvantage uh, the last two are things that you can't necessarily get completely around though. I didn't really think about this at first, but I realized along the way that it can be distracting to the people sitting around me when my screen is black and flashing up code and I'm editing things and you know maybe there's compiling going on and things like that and they ask you questions after class and they get distracted looking at us instead of you know listening to the uh, professor. And so I try to sit in the back or try to, you know, not be too flashy with it. And people kind of get used to what I'm doing so they don't always have to look at it. But uh, that's something to, to think about. Uh, the one that I think is more of a problem is that it can be distracting to you. And that's mainly because you, I at least have a tendency to be kind of a tweak addict where I'm like, oh, well, my script isn't working exactly how I want it to work. Or, you know, these notes, the coloring is off or something. I found a bug or that sort of thing and you kind of tweak and tweak and, and you miss what the lecturer just said uh, or just because you're in Vim and on the command line you're you know tempted to work on some other project that you're more interested in than whatever he's talking about right now so keep that in mind too um, but I think you know you can get distracted no matter what note-taking system you use and you can distract your peers likewise regardless of, of the system you use um, but things to be mindful of so um, Basically, in my other video, I showed how you know you can use different templating plugins for Vim. Like there's XP template, there's uh, what is there? There's you know snippets, Vim snippets, and other plugins like that that you can use to make file headers. Um, like for example, let me pull up a file here. Like I had a little uh, snippet for this that would just put in the title of the file, would put in the today's date, and then instructor and leave my cursor right here so I can type in the professor's name and then get started uh, writing my notes. Um, so you could make a little, you know, you could make a little uh, snippet to do that for you or to make images for you or not, you know, type it by hand if you want. It's not too much to type. Um, but other than that, the only really thing in Vim that I used was kind of this search function. So I made a, I just used Vim grep basically, and made a little command in grep that that has a little mapping leader open bracket, so that I can type leader open bracket, and now you can see it put in Vim, or sorry, in grep, and then I can type something in here like Pio promo cytoma, and that will search for all the, for that word in all of the. Uh, text files inside of my notes directory and then vimgrep pulls up and you can see in the bottom left there it says it found uh, nine different um, instances of pheochromocytoma and those files that it's in or the instances all, all get added to the quick fix list in vim you don't have to open it this way um, you can just use c next and c previous to go 
back and forth through them, I map those to control N and control P. So I can just go through all these uh, instances and, and read about pheochromocytoma now. Um, as you can see, it matched a capital P2, so it wasn't case sensitive. Uh, one of the nice things about using Vim grep instead of using external grep is that you can use Vim regex patterns inside these arguments. So I could, uh, again, hit my little mapping. And if I wanted it to be case sensitive, I could use you know the Vim regex backslash capital C, which makes it case sensitive. Search for pheochromocytoma again. And now it only found six instances, and the capital P instances are gone. So that's a really easy way to review notes, and you can look at all the instances. And if you see something there that you want to add, you know, while you're there, it's super easy just to add on to it. Um, so I found that very useful. Um, I could kind of take you through the actual notes script that I created and how it works, but it's not all that interesting and probably your note script would be unique in of itself because it you probably won't have modules which is more of a medical school convention and even my medical school doesn't use that anymore they changed their curriculum last year but modules are basically just like little blocks of six six weeks that contain multiple subjects and uh, you know, you could you could structure your directory however you wanted with cl by classes or by semesters or by quarters or however your school does it. But basically, I just made this little script, and uh, my bash scripting skills were not quite that great uh, when I first wrote this either. So you probably will want to write your own uh, instead of using this but you can use this to kind of take a look at how it works and as you can see here basically it works as a wrapper for pandoc that just feeds in uh, all the arguments that I needed and then all the names of the files in a particular uh, year and module and then it'll just echo out that it created that PDF so for example if I wanted to you know compile the PDF for year 2 in module 3 I could do notes 2 3 and then it'll give me a little message and then it's compiling in the background it's going slow right now I think because I'm also uh, I'm also encoding this video on the fly but I'm surprised it's taking this long I guess there was a lot of notes in that module or a lot of images okay so it recreated the PDF and now it's recompiling the uh, master PDF for the whole year my script makes a PDF for both the module and for the whole year so we don't need to watch the rest of that but anyways if I go into my notes directory you can see how this is structured uh, I have a folder for each year medical school 1, medical school 2 and here's all the modules inside those modules there's uh, text files the text files have the name of the course and then the name of the lecture and inside that it's just markdown that I've already shown you um, there's also an image folder here that has some images in it so for example if I open up uh, this one I think it is it has this image tag and markdown in it and all I have to do is put uh, image and then the image that I want to reference and then that will get included um, so if we open up this PDF uh, right here in Zathura, then uh, you can see it makes a table of contents with each of the lectures and the different headings that are in them. In Zathura, you can actually go through this with a little, uh, you know, you can browse a structured PDF in this way. And if I go to that image you can see here's that image that I was referencing it's the allosteric states of the ATCase enzyme so that makes for a very you know readable format I can kinda of go through this and review it of course early on in my note-taking days uh, with this format you can see how huge these blocks are that's a very bad idea also the lines are very long uh, also a bad idea you can see it's turning red right here because I put a little limit on how far it can get um, before running to the next line on the PDF which bugs me 
but if you look in, I guess, one of the older, uh, let's see, maybe like the last module of, of second year, and we look at one of the files in here, now you can see these blocks are much shorter. The lines don't overflow or go too far. And so it makes for a better reading experience too. Um, we can open up this PDF too. And you can see it's it has a table there. That's nice. I don't know if there's any images in this one, but you can see how nice and easily readable it is. There's an image right there. So here's some images. Cool. So basically the idea was to get to this. Um, a nice, easily searchable, easily readable notes format. I also made a another tool I call GTD, um, which is another script. It's also available on my GitHub projects repository, and it just it's a script that works like a little tea timer kind of, and it stands for get things done. If you didn't know and you can specify a working length and a break length so it'll go like say 25 minutes you'll be working and then five minutes you'll be on break and it will like turn toggle your music on and off or or whatever when it's time for a break and it's just a nice way to keep you on task so that you can tell yourself as long as I'm in a working period I'm gonna focus and I'm gonna study and I'm gonna take notes so I use this pretty regularly during my first two years. I would go to a coffee shop, you know, turn this on and try to do three periods of 25 minutes and, you know, grab a PDF of some lectures and take those kind of VIM markdown notes on them and uh, try to, you know, get it into my head pretty solidly. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Take a look at, you know, what works for you and take my advice with a grain of salt and let me know if, uh, you have any questions or, or if there's things that worked for you that you'd like to add then please comment and let other people know but I hope you found this video of some use and I appreciate you watching it